The Neurosurgery Research and Education Foundation serves as the philanthropic arm of the AANS. The NREF sponsors educational courses for residents and practicing physicians, as well as grants research monies to medical students and residents to further the scientific endeavors of our field. Please consider a donation. Neurosurgeons play a critical role in trauma systems, not only for the operative and critical care expertise that we bring to the care of the patient, but also because of our knowledge of what it takes to optimally care for patients through the gamut of care, extending from pre-hospital, field resuscitation, transportation, acute care, rehabilitation, transitions of care, and ultimately community reintegration and prevention programs. Today, we will hear about the origins of one of our earliest trauma care systems in the United States, that of Orange County, California, and more broadly, Southern California. Well, during the, during the 70s, uh, there were incidents here where uh, people would be brought into the hospital who needed neurosurgical care without any forewarning to us at this hospital. And uh, there were occasions even occurring to me where patients needed surgery who were in the emergency room and we didn't necessarily have the personnel available to do that and uh, we were uninformed about the arrival of the patients. Uh, there was not an expectation that they were coming. There was nothing set up or ready for them to come. So that oftentimes there was a lot of confusion, there was a lot of delay, and that was actually part of the problem. Uh, trauma care was kind of haphazard. It depended on, uh, depended on who was on call that night and whether they had an interest in it. It was a result of, all, of a number of really forward-looking individuals who decided to develop the system, who really worked with county government, uh, worked with the state, worked with the University of California and the large hospital providers to convince everyone that we needed a specialized program for trauma. My name is uh, Dr. John West. Uh, I trained at UC San Francisco, I actually started at Berkeley and then went to UC San Francisco for four years of medical school. I did my internship there and then five years of residency in San Francisco. I was at the trauma center. I was there from the time I was a uh, intern rotating it to it to the senior resident when I was really in charge of the trauma center. Uh, that was back in the 60s. And uh, it was a center that was totally organized. We had surgeons. Uh, we had anesthesiologists in the house, we had neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, and when a patient was critically ill, multiple problems, we could get all the specialists right there who knew what they were doing and knew how to work with the team, and we saved people that just wouldn't have made it in other systems. I finished my residency in 73 and moved to Orange County. And at that time, we had 32 hospitals. Most of them were owned by doctors. In the beginning, after Orange County began to grow, there were several small hospitals that were established throughout the county. And many patients were sent to those hospitals. And the paramedics were instructed to take the patients to the nearest receiving hospital and not to trauma centers or designated centers for trauma. Our own hospital, which is a major hospital in Orange County, had a really mediocre emergency room. They had doctors hired from UCI to cover the night call and they didn't have really any kind of a system. Well, it was almost predictable that a tragedy was going to happen and it did. About the year after I was there, an eight-year-old boy was, was hit by a car uh, right near the hospital. He was brought in within a few minutes. He looked great. He looked stable. His vital signs were stable. They sutured him up uh, and while he was suturing him, he went into cardiac arrest. They were able to resuscitate, resuscitate him. They sent him in for some imaging. They finally called a surgeon in, who was Al Gazaniga, one of the f founders of a Orange County trauma system. The boy ended up dying before Al could get in and open his abdomen and save his life. And um, it, he essentially bled to death. And this was a tragedy. It was preventable. Had he gone to San Francisco General, he would have been home in seven days. The uh, Weston Trunky paper in uh, 1979 actually Came, it came as the EMS system was developing. Uh, the EMS system developed without really a focus on trauma, so that paper was in fact uh, a landmark paper, not just in Southern California really, but throughout the United States, but it was a landmark paper that showed 
in a developed um, high income county that trauma was still a major issue. It was an epidemic at that time. I got a worldwide response. I had friends that were in Europe, friends that were in Asia, and it was in the it was the headlines in most of these, and I said, well, what the heck? Because most people didn't have any idea what I was doing, most of my medical colleagues. So it was only neurosurgeons and general surgeons that were really somewhat aware of this. And uh, the, the differences were so striking. I mean, a third of the patients in Orange County were dying <laughs> needlessly. They were bleeding to death because of lack of treatment, lack of response from surgeons, neurosurgeons, lack of a team, there was a lack of an organization, there was a lack of structure. You couldn't blame necessarily any one doctor, but the system uh, just was not designed to take care of the problem that they were having. Well, the doctors all along were host hostile to what I was doing. The Orange County Medical Association had me come in and have a, had a group of doctors talking to me who were officers of that organization and says, if you talk to the media one more time, you're out of the medical association. And if you're out of the medical association, it's going to be hard for you to have a growing practice. And so, of course, I totally uh, ignore them and keep because the media was really uh, on our side and we went forward. And so we got a lot of negative feedback from doctors saying that, you know, this system is just too uh, disruptive that you shouldn't be changing things around. They're all right as they are. Throughout the history of Orange County, uh, it, the trauma system could not exist until neurosurgery supported the trauma system. In the early beginning, neurosurgery was sort of at the side. Emergency medicine was at the side. Uh, only after a couple of years of, um, you know, I say, uh, some arrogant people becoming less arrogant did they pull in neurosurgery. But it was really fairly simple. We had to have fewer hospitals. They had to be committed to higher levels of commitment. And we had to be held accountable for what we did. And uh, we were able to create a system that met those criteria. And guess what? After the first year, we dropped motor vehicle trauma mortality from about where it started at about 60 or 70 percent down to 2 percent. It was a remarkable, a remarkable drop. Trauma care is truly payer blind today. So overcoming that barrier and committing to do that uh, was something people were willing to do in the 70s. So that was critical. Uh, our boundaries are artificial, um, you know, property tax, things like that are based on boundaries but not trauma. Uh, you yeah, know, trauma basically uh, what does it care whether it's on this side or that side of the 605 freeway? I believe that the neurosurgeons have knowledge that other specialists don't present and have in taking care of those patients. So I think it's necessary for us to be always involved in the care of patients with neurological trauma. The Orange County Trauma System Development served as a precursor for the development of many trauma systems across the United States which now has a mature network of trauma systems providing efficient, effective, and sophisticated care to provide optimal outcomes for our trauma patients. With the advent of interventional techniques such as mechanical thrombectomy for the treatment of stroke, the lessons learned can now be applied to other arenas of neurosurgical care, such as interventional neurosurgery. We owe a debt of gratitude to Dr. Kuski, Dr. West, and all of our colleagues who worked so hard to build these systems of care in the early 1970s and beyond. <laughs>